In this morning's Breakfast Bible Bites, we will examine God's magnificent purpose for humanity through the resurrection of those who died in their faith. The awesome result of our Creator's activity on earth encapsulates the accomplishment of Jesus' propitiatory work in bringing the willing to the Father's glory. We read this in Hebrews 2, 8 through 12. God subjected everything to Jesus. We do not yet see everything subjected to him, but we see Jesus made a little lower than the angels for a short time, so that God's grace, through God's grace, he might taste death for everyone, crowned with glory and honor because of his suffering in death. For in bringing many sons to glory, it was entirely appropriate that God, now all things exist for him and through him, should be made the source of their salvation perfect through suffering. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers. I will sing hymns to you in the congregation. As the Apostle Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 15, 22 through 23, God accomplishes his plan in stages. It reads, For as in Adam all die, even so, in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Over the eons and dispensations, God has been busy separating for himself a human family with whom he will enjoy spending an eternity according to his own timetable. Each dispensation opens the door for some to be saved even though Many today assume the only day of salvation is right now, and once the church is taken to heaven, that door will be closed forever, even though our Bible doesn't teach that. In fact, it shows just the opposite. The whole purpose of the yet-to-occur millennial error is that many more will be saved to eternal life as they live and love under the righteous jurisdiction of the King of Kings. The first resurrection represents the first fruits of God's salvation, but perhaps a much larger group representing those being saved during the millennial kingdom on earth will be privileged to share in the new earth and uh, in the new Jerusalem. The promise of this eternal habitation began back in the Old Testament with the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 65:17, For I will create a new heaven and a new earth, The past events will not be remembered or come to mind. Then be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I will create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. In 2 Peter 3, 12 through 13, Peter tells the church to wait patiently. We read, as you wait for and earnestly desire the coming of of the day of God. The heavens will be on fire and be dissolved because of it, and the elements will melt with heat. But based on his promise, we wait for the new heaven and the new earth where righteousness will dwell. The promise will be fulfilled. We read about it in Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea no longer existed. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud noise from the throne. Look, God is dwelling with humanity. He will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will no longer exist. Grief, crying, and pain will exist no longer because the previous things have passed away. Praise God.